And now, you're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. What's up, everyone? What's up, RBLR Nation? How's everyone doing tonight, today, this week, wherever you're tuning in from? Um, hope everyone's doing well. Um, you know, it's kind of a another uneventful week. Unfortunately, we're getting into the dregs of the offseason, you know. Uh, more focused on other things like baseball, the Western and Eastern Conference Finals. You know, uh, there's a lot of other things going on, but we're still here to talk about some Bucks things because, you know, OTA started this week. There are some way too early power rankings that we'll get into. Um, and, you know, got to got to get into that. And, uh, you know, we'll see how it goes because, you know, power rankings at this point feel kind of silly to me. But then again, got to find something to talk about. Right. Uh, <laughs> before before we get into all that, though, I got to introduce my wonderful co-hosts. Uh, first up, we got Musab Tariq. Say hello to everyone. What's up with you, Musab? What's going on, Zach? What's going on, Carter? Uh, always a pleasure to be back here with the boys. Uh, and as you mentioned, uh, you know, there will be weeks that we may not have too much going on, but there's still some off-season activity going on right now. And as you mentioned, uh, look forward to talking about that with you all both. Zach, what about you, man? How are we feeling tonight? Hey, man, you know what? I'm feeling great. Miami took an L last night, which sucks. Tampa took an L last night, which sucks. But, you know, today's a new day. Tampa's winning right now. We're just we're just going to have – today's going to be better than yesterday. That's all we – you know, we just got to look at it that way. Hey, for the Rays, it can't be any worse than yesterday. Too. God. Good gracious. But I saw anyway, the highlights, and that was enough. Right. Jesus, that's all you needed to see, man. For sure. Yeah, there weren't very many highlights. It was more like the lowlights for the Rays. But, um, <laughs> Before we get it, before we get too deep in our baseball uh, rabbit hole, um, we'll we'll start the discussion with the power rankings. You know that was kind of the that was kind of a big thing that I noticed this week, and I figured we'd just bring it up. ESPN released them, um, and y- you know they're they're kind of the post draft NFL FPI rankings. Um, you know, football power index for those who who don't know the acronym because I didn't know it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they got the Bucks at thirty. I mean, the bottom three, only the Cardinals and the Texans are below them. Um, just kind of rough. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not expecting the Bucks to, you know, burn the house down and do some amazing things. But, man, 30th. I mean, only only ahead of two teams. It's brutal. But then again, you know, I'm also taking into account their schedule. Just because they have a better record than, say, you know, a team in a tougher division, um, say the Steelers or something weird, it doesn't necessarily mean they're better than the Steelers. It just means that they get to play the Panthers and the Falcons and the Saints. Um, so, anyways, all of that to say, um, do you how, do y'all agree with this ranking? Do y'all maybe think it's way too low? I personally do, but you know, I don't know. Maybe y'all disagree. Zach, we'll, we'll start with you. How, how do we feel about the rankings? Accurate? Too low? Maybe too high? Maybe you think they're the worst team? In the <laughs> they're definitely not the worst team in the NFL. Right. <laughs> no, I think that that's way too low. I don't even think we're – I think we're one of the top two teams in our division, and this has us ranked as last – not only in our division, but towards the bottom of the whole NFL. Um, there's not that many teams better than us. Do I think – the best way to describe it, in my opinion, is we are bottom 15 in the league, bottom 16 in the league. Like I'd put us at the bottom half of the league. Absolutely. But I would put us at the top half of that bottom half, if that makes sense at all. I get you for sure. So I'd, I'd put us between like 16 to 20 in that range to have us at 30, I think is asinine. Wow. Asinine. Listen, to I know that. big word. I'm, I'm trying, <laughs> man, you get word of the day, toilet paper or something. My goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Expanding that That's impressive. Um, no, but asinine is a very astute way of putting it. Um, 30, definitely way too low. I'm with you. The 16 to 20 range is probably where I'd have a maybe extend it to 22, yeah, uh, you know, 16, I could I could see that. Yeah, like anywhere within there. Yeah, I feel you. But um, these power rankings are always so goofy to me. You know who who sits down and is just like, well, technically this team's probably better. Than that. Like it's all based on record. Like who the hell cares if they're better on paper? No, exactly, like, and that's the, I mean, as a Rays fan, we've we've dealt with this forever. For sure. Like we're used to. It doesn't no, matter. We right. had at one point we were thirteen and zero this season. They still had us ranked third. Like right. so, I mean, we're we're kind of used to it at this point, but it just feels weird for them to go out and tell me that the Colts rookie quarterback, the Panthers rookie quarterback, yeah. the Falcons, depending on who they start, technically a rookie court, not technically, but realistically, might as well be if they start Ritter. 
for sure. The Packers rookie quarterback. Again, not really a rookie, but never literally. No, never absolutely. Played. Um, the Rams too. I mean, good yeah, Lord. the Rams who have were trash last year. Yeah, one of the worst teams in football. So just looking at all of that, and and it just it's not adding up to me. Yeah, it's weird. We saw. How about you, man? Do you do you maybe agree with this ranking a little more, or maybe you're a little less high on the Bucks than Zach and myself? I'll tell you this. I think that these rankings are nothing but absolute baloney to me. You see so many things on media, you know, with these reports coming out as to, oh, what is the chance that the Miami Heat are going to beat the Celtics? Three percent. Three. Yeah, three. That's all we need. I'm speaking, I'm, I'm speaking these numbers from the city of Boston. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm, I'm not going to go in on that. What I'm trying to say is, yeah, Celtics 97 percent, Heat third, three percent. So this power ranking is, I think it's more something along the lines of, hey, we're better off reporting that they're going to do worse than they might do than saying better because there is a chance for them to do bad, you know, to kind of crap the bed. But then again, I really don't think so. I understand that we have a whole kind of new style, no more Brady and all that. But, I mean, come on, guys. Uh, for me, I I'm thinking – there was a number I'll throw out there. I'll probably say like early 20s. Not even early 20s. I'll probably go, yeah, 22, 23. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Max 24. You know what I'm saying? But, guys, I mean, was there ever a thought in your head, Zach and Carter, that there might be a chance we really do end up being one of the worst teams in the NFL this season because of the kind of new slate we're on, you know? Yeah, Carter, I'll let you answer that first, brother. I appreciate it. Well, uh, they have Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask as potential quarterbacks. That in and of itself is enough to to make any team potentially go 3-14 and 14 easily without breaking a sweat. So, you know, it's all up to them because Baker has shown he's he's got some talent. You know, he played really well for that one year in Cleveland. He also played not so well last year in Carolina. Um, he got his job stolen by Sam Darnold, which is brutal. So, you know, there are the there's the two sides of it. You don't know what you're going to get with him. And then if he does really crap the bed and they have to go with Kyle Trask, then that, that means things aren't going well and things probably aren't going to get any better just because you put in a guy who has no meaningful NFL snaps under his belt. So either way the quarterback situation goes, you know, if they're moving on from Baker, then like in midseason, that means they could easily go 3-14. and 14 like I said, without breaking a sweat, without it even being hard. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm, I'm with you. Like, I, I think there is a chance for sure. But, you know, it's not a, not a you, large chance. So you wouldn't be surprised if we just ended up no. at the bottom. Okay. For sure. Not at all. Not at all. I wouldn't be all surprised right. at all. But I, just all as right. equally, I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up winning the NFC South. It's one of those things you don't really know. It's weird. Right. Zach Maher too, though. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, listen, Carter. I will not handle the Baker Mayfield hate over here. I mean, look, right it's now, true, though. It's true. Listen, it's sort of true, <laughs> all right? It's sort of. He played very good in Cleveland. The only reason he's not in Cleveland is because of Deshaun Watson. Like, But in, in, in a sense, like, at the time, I, I wouldn't have traded for him because of the allegations, but – Skill wise, like that's like saying if we had a starting quarterback who got to the playoffs, we would would we still trade for Lamar Jackson? Yes, we would if we could. But after seeing last year, I'm sure they probably feel kind of stupid if I'm being honest with you, because Baker played much better than Deshaun Watson played last year. Not not last year, but his last year in Cleveland, I should say. Okay. So Baker is a guy who, when he's established, he can play passable football i'm not saying he's a hall of famer i'm not saying he's a pro bowler but he can play passable football i don't see a chance that we are the 30th ranked team next season oh man you want you willing to put a wager on that my friend i, I already have cookies on it with your mom dude <laughs> so oh, but cool. that is that is a wager that i would be willing to make because i don't i don't see a 3 and 14 team here we have too much veteran presence on this team to go three and 14. Right. It's I, just I do think that we could 
have a losing season, but I don't think we're 30th. Like, if we have a bad season, I'm putting us at pick, like, 9 or 10 in the draft. So, like, ninth or 10th worst record in the NFL, not second worst or first worst record in the NFL. Right. It's just the problem with me is that they had Tom Brady under center last year, and they went 8-9. and nine. They had a losing record last year. They just played in a god-awful division. So you replace Tom Brady with Baker Mayfield, there's going to be a pretty substantial drop-off. I mean, but I, I get it. I get it. it it's so, definitely not, I'm not a gambling man, but if I was, I certainly yeah. wouldn't, bet on I wouldn't bet on them to be the 30th worst team in the NFL. I, sure. I guess my, my thing with – like we had Brady behind center last year. It was not Brady of old. <laughs> like, For sure. Of this course. was yeah. – I don't want to say he was washed up, but in respect to his career, he was washed up at that point. 100%. 100%. No, Again, still you. better than most quarterbacks in the NFL, but still compared to what Brady was, he was washed up. For so sure. when we're getting a more mobile quarterback, who I don't think not, Mayfield is not going to rush for 100 yards – any game, but he's much more mobile than both Trask and uh, Brady were. And we're running a new system that relies more on a quarterback who's able to get out of the pocket. I think that this it's, it's going to surprise a few people. I hope so. The new OC should. Right? Have a lot. Um, I'm very excited about that. Um, but Musab, I, I had a question for you since you posed an excellent question for us. Um, I'm going to shoot right back at you. Um, Speaking in terms of the NFC South, you know, they had it Saints and then um, Falcons, Panthers, and then obviously the Bucks last. Uh, what what order would you maybe put, just not even in the scope of the all 32 teams, but just specifically those four in the power rankings, whatever the hell you want to call it, um, just the NFC South specifically? Like, would you have Bucks one and then Saints, Panthers, Falcons, or what, what would your order be? For me, I honestly – generally think that um realistically the saints will stand at number one uh, at the end of the season we might make it close we might make it close but falcons panthers and buccaneers we'll just see how it goes honestly i i think it's this is a huge trial year for both of those teams and for us um we have this kind of experience of playing together but then again we're also being led by someone that's not named tom brady you know what i'm saying (laughs) uh as we were kind of talking about you know these past uh you know issues with you know how we're really going to turn out to be i was thinking you know what i understand that i think our defense i'm very optimistic but it's the offense we're looking for the run game right now or last season was kind of depressing okay and on top of that now we have a new quarterback we don't even know who the starter is i have high hopes for baker mayfield i think he's still got it in him but then again i wouldn't be su- surprised if he plays mediocre or absolute like dog crap and now we have to throw a trask in you know what i'm saying so it's almost like we are this returning championship team not really but the, the vibes are kind of like that but now your point guard is some dude you just got this year, you know what I'm saying? Or right. you're just starting off with them, you know what I'm saying? Jameer Nelson. And the the floor, yeah, the floor general right now is Baker Mayfield to Kyle Trask, and uh, I'm interested to see how that turns out. I have a lot of high hopes for Baker Mayfield. I think that this was the right move for him. He has a little bit more of a kind of fresh start or something. Um, I, I see articles saying, oh, well, Kyle Trask has experience in the locker room and, you know, with the players and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I don't care about that, man. You know what I'm saying? If you see Evans Godwin, you see Kate Otten running around the field open, I think Baker Mayfield is going to make something happen. All right. Yeah. He's so got the on-field make- experience. So uh, for that reason, I'm going to say Saints number one. But after that, I don't know, dude. I'm gonna say Bucks. I'm gonna say Bucks two, Panthers three, Falcons four. Or actually, no, Falcons wow. three, Panthers four. Okay, um, fair. Enough. I was gonna yeah, say, I was so. prompt you. I was gonna say, all right. I know it's a tough, tough question, but gun to your head, you know who you who you got in the rankings. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I think I think Saints one is definitely a lock. 
I think the Falcons at two, and then I think Bucks three, Panthers four, just because the Panthers' weapons are tough and that defense is who knows what you got out there. Um, but Zach, how about you? What are your NFC South power rankings? Completely different. Well, uh, aside from I have the Panthers at three, I've got the Saint. So I've got Falcons and Bucks are going to battle it out for first and second. Really? Uh, I'm, okay. yeah, I'm telling you. I think people are sleeping on Taylor Heineke potentially being the starter in Atlanta with that offense, with Kyle Pitts, Drake London, Bijan Robinson now, Cordero Patterson, who they're putting back at wide receiver. The Falcons are a scary team. They they made, they made spent a lot of money in the offseason. They got a former first-round pick at corner and Jeff Okuda, who I think has potential to be very good. For sure. That team scares me. Yeah, so I've got to be really good. Exactly. So I've got Atlanta and Tampa battling for one and two. I think I'm going to go with Atlanta at one, Tampa at two. I have Carolina making a jump and being three, and then Saints at four. Whoo, man! Whoa, man. man! Everyone's Saints too high four. on the Saints. What did they do? Who like what? What did they do this off season? They added Derek Carr. Yeah, I mean, they got Derek yeah, Carr, a, man. A That's not the big thing. <laughs> A very missed one. He ain't he ain't God, but I Derek mean, then Carr, again, man, Derek no one's Carr God has right the now same the ability league. that Baker Mayfield has. They nah, could play. Uh, they I could play the exact that, same man. level of play. I think I, I think know. Baker's got some catching up to do, but I'm not saying that he's played to that level yet. I'm saying they have the same ability. But you know what? No, listen, Carr, I can go, I can go right with you, Zach, because the thing is, it's not just about Derek Carr and Baker Mayfield. We have a whole team of, you know, supporting cast members who are really going to make these things happen. You know what I'm saying? So Derek Carr and Baker Mayfield can play beautifully, but if the guys don't catch the ball, they don't run the right routes, or they don't have the chemistry, you know, with their quarterback, then it can it can go downhill both ways. I think yeah, that's, 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 that's kind of where I'm thinking. NFC South so beautiful because honestly, it's kind of a crapshoot right now. It, 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 anyone could be the top. Yeah, exactly. Like I don't think I think I said it. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, a few episodes back that I think our division is going to be the closest division. Like I think that it's going to be within two or three games for all the positions. Yeah. Between from one to fourth. So I think that it's not going to be anything crazy. Like, I don't think Atlanta's going to run away with it. And I don't think that the Saints are going to go 0 and 17. <laughs> like, that's just not realistic. So I think that what we're going to see is, is a very close matchup. And any of those positions could go to any of those teams, in all honesty. Yeah. I mean, realistically, everyone could go three and three in division play. Um, yes, exactly. One of those divisions. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. Derek Carr and Baker Mayfield. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not super high on Derek Carr either. He got he got benched last year on a very meh Raiders team, but he also led them to the playoffs the year before with Hunter Renfro as his number one wide receiver and a you know a mixed bag of Darren Waller being healthy and not healthy throughout the season with a defense that was pretty meh as well. I, I don't know. I just I think I think the Raiders gave up on Derek Carr very quickly. Um, because they just wanted to move on and just kind of be done with a lot of what was going on in that organization because they had the you know the Henry Ruggs thing they had just all these first round picks that just didn't work out at all the you know it was just a mess they moved to Las Vegas the the move was weird so I don't know I think that they just moved on because they just wanted to start over in Vegas and I think that the Saints aren't going to set the world on fire but I think Derek Carr fits kind of the mold of what they want to do offensively with Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara and an offensive line. That's not bad. You know, it's, it's just, it's an interesting team. They're just really old. If they can stay healthy, I think they will be the best team in the NFC South, but that's a very big if, um, you know, it's, it really, so now, injuries. how many, <laughs> excuse me again, God, sorry. I got something on my throat. Um, how many playoffs did Derek Carr go to? He went to at least one last year. Um, not this last season, but the year before. The season, yeah, his his um, whole se- his last whole season as a starter. Right. Um, I don't know. I feel like I think it's only been one, right? But I think I, I could be wrong. Right. Um, I don't know, but he's also a four time Pro Bowler, so he's made he's made two playoff appearances. Um, okay. 
So I, I don't know. I've never looked at the Raiders and thought Derek Carr is the issue. They need to move on from him right now. Like it was always their defense was really bad. Their offensive their offensive line is one of the worst in football. Agreed. Colton Miller because their left tackle is fantastic, but the rest of the offensive line just a wash. Um, so I, I don't know. It's a really tough. It's a really tough thing to evaluate. Um, yeah, and I guess bad. I guess that's kind of my issue with it is like so yes. Derek Carr has been to two playoff games where Baker Mayfield's only been to one. But can you honestly say that you've ever looked at, let's say, the Browns and been like, Baker Mayfield is the Browns' problem? Because know. I remember when Baker Mayfield got cut from the Browns, or did he got traded, not cut, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he got traded. I remember thinking they gave up on him too early. Same thing you said about Derek Carr, like that he never had any weapons around him. He, Again, he had OBJ, played like shit in Cleveland. Jarvis Landry, he played good. So I'll give him Jarvis Landry, but it was Jarvis Landry kind of at the tail end of his career. Right. But the thing is, they had he had Nick Chubb behind him for a lot of those years. Like, he hand the ball I mean, to Nick Josh Chubb. Jacobs and he, Derek Carr had Josh Jacobs. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just – I'm not as – low on Derek Carr as I think you are, and I'm also not as high on Baker Mayfield. To me, they're pretty much the same. They're very interchangeable. They're See, really that's different. that's where I'm at with it, so I'll, I'll agree with you on that one 100%. Yeah, the only real difference is just that Derek Carr is, a, in my opinion, a more entrenched starter. I think he could be – you know, he could be a pro bowler this year. If, if, all, if they play their cards right, I think that he could be really, really productive because he loves those short passes, dink and dunks. And that yeah, Michael Thomas is. is coming back. Right, that's what Drew Brees did his whole career. So, like, the Saints' offense is kind of built for that kind of thing. So that's kind of what makes me excited about Derek Carr in the in New Orleans, at least from a football perspective. But you know what we don't need to disagree about, Zach, is what? Tell the me. fire merch that they have at rblr.sports.com. Um, oh, you know, yeah. Not everything, you know, you need for the Rays, the Bucks, the Lightning, and the Rowdies. Um, you know, we had a Rowdy's watch party this past weekend that went really, really well. So if you want to, you know, if you just get inspired and just are like, wow, I want to watch some soccer. I feel you. There's a new Ted Lasso episode that came out today. So, you know, if you're great playing, episode too. Yeah. Wonderful episode. Um, anyways, we're getting a little <laughs> away from the shop, but no, but if you're trying to rock some new threads, you know, um, the Rays are playing right now. Like Zach said, they're winning. Yep. Luke um, Rayleigh hit a home run already. So go get absolutely. you a Luke Reiki, uh, t-shirt. 100%. Yep. You can get one of those or the bring back the devil or whatever you're feeling. Um, you can get 10% off everything with a promo code Canon, C A N N O N S. Um, definitely check it out. Uh, check out the merch. It's definitely got some fire on there um, for the summer or just, you know, whatever your trip, whatever you're feeling. So, anyways, after that shameless shot plug, we are going to move on to OTAs because they began this week. And, um, you know, OTAs aren't really the biggest deal in the world. You know, they're kind of just. Ho hum, you know, they're voluntary. Not everyone has to show up. A lot of the veterans did not show up, but the most noticeable one for me personally, at least, that did not attend, which you don't want to look too much into it because, like I said, it's OTAs, it's voluntary, but Devin White was a no show and his trade requests situation is still up in the air. The contract negotiations, no one's really, no one really knows what's going on there. There haven't really been any updates other than Jason Light being very adamant about the fact that they don't want to trade him. Um, I don't know. What Do y'all put a lot of stock into White being a no-show at OTAs, or do you think uh, him, Mike, a bunch of people didn't show up? You know, it's not really that serious. Um, how, how do we feel about it? Zach, we'll start with you. Is Devin White not showing up a bigger deal than I'm making it to be? I don't think it's a big deal. I, I think that if anyone expected him to show up, you're crazy. For sure. Like we, I, I want him there, but you, you touched on a lot of the veteran players aren't there. So you can't really read too much into these OTAs. Now, once we get into mandatory, mandatory training camp and stuff, I think that's when it gets more serious. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you expected Devin white there with the contract issue and him requesting a trade, I think you were hoping for too much. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair point. We saw, how about you? Maybe you're more, a little freaked out by this or are you kind of with us and you're kind of like, eh, you know, let's pump the brakes. It's not really that serious. We got a little bit of time to wait. A bit more indifferent on this. Um, I think that 
We should wait on it. You know, I I don't really have much to say, but I will say as a kid made a huge kind of PR mistake, you know, to say that he's worth more than, you know, anyone's giving him. You know what I'm saying? Getting a little too cocky and, uh, you know, he should remember how he has played this past season. I think the reason why Jason Light is so adamant is I think that we will work something out with him uh, because he doesn't have an option. I don't see anyone else signing him for the money he wants. But I'll leave it at that. It's just that, uh, you know, we'll work something out. I'm not surprised. To be honest, if he ends up going somewhere else, I wish him all the best. And, you know, it is what it is just because the way he's acted. You know, I know I can understand how someone like him feels. But to act this way, especially with, you know, the media, it's not right. So, yeah. Yeah, it is kind of a weird, sticky situation. Whenever it's a contract situation like this, it's always kind of awkward, especially when it's a position that's not really a huge priority right now. I mean, with all due respect to Devin, Devin White, the inside linebacker position, you can't pay $10 million each to both inside linebackers. You know, I mean, they're already – so I just – I don't know. It's, it's tough because they also spent – you know, not a high high draft pick, but they spent a I believe it was a fifth round pick on that position. Um, so they might envision themselves moving on from Devin White and Levante David in the near future. So I just I don't know. I'm with you, Musab. It's been kind of weird. It's been kind of awkward. Um, I don't think anyone really knows what to make of it um, because if he holds out, I don't think he's I don't think he has the leverage that I think he does. Like I think that he thinks he does. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's that's um, what I was gonna touch on. Like if he if he decides to hold out, like he's not gonna get paid. Like, right? I'm talking. I'm talking this way not because I want him on the team, but Ezekiel Elliott. Like when he, when he held out, he was Dallas's best weapon. For sure, right? Devin White is not Tampa's best weapon. So if he holds out, like in all honesty, what what's gonna happen is we're gonna have somebody, um, Servassier, uh What's his last name? like Davis or something, whatever. Yeah, the pit so, guy. Yeah, yeah the, exactly. He's going to step in. I, I don't think he's going to be a pro bowler, but I think that he's going to step in and play good enough to where Tampa's like, maybe we don't need to pay you 15 mil a season. <laughs> like, Maybe your position's easier to fill than we thought. So I think that if he holds out, he's shooting himself in the foot. And if I'm Tampa – and he holds out, I'm trading him. I'll, I'll, I'll get what I can get for him now, and we'll fill his position when we need to. But here's the thing. If they could have found a trade partner for him, I think they would have traded him already. I think they would have you easily have moved on because uh, he's essentially the same. Him and Levante David, obviously Levante David's far older. He's longer yeah. in the youth. He's definitely closer to retiring than he is any. Yeah, I else. think this is his last year. But Devin White is also on a one-year deal. You know, this is the last year of his contract. So in my mind, they're interchangeable. Um, So in my mind, it's like, well, I don't – maybe they think differently, but I just don't think they're going to extend Devin White regardless of what happens this season. See, I'm on the same page you are. Like, I think that at the end of this year is the last year we have him anyway. For sure. But I also think that Tampa was very adamant on saying – we're not going to accept a trade for him. We're not going to trade him. So I think a lot of teams maybe didn't call because of that. Yeah, I don't know, though, because there's there's this rumor, like Greg Allman said this, I think, in a tweet, that he thinks that he made a request really early in the offseason. Because to make a request when he did, it's just weird. No teams have the cap space to afford to extend him. No teams are really looking at, you know, adding to their roster at this point. I mean, the free agency market has become stagnant. Yeah. Uh, so to make the request when he did, it was really odd. And so I'm kind of with Greg. I think that he probably formally made the request privately to the Bucks very early. And the Bucks said, all right, we'll see what we can do. And there was nothing. No one was taking him. No one was really saying – because they were like, well, look, if you want to get rid of him that bad, you can just cut him. You know, we're not going to yeah. give up draft capital for a guy that we could just sign. You know, it's not like it's going to affect his contract because they're already having to pay a top 10 first-round – you know, salary cap hit anyways, if they traded for him. So there's no price reduction. They're only just wasting capital. Um, So, yeah, I I don't know. I don't know if I buy the whole Devin White can get traded because he's not at a position of need and he's not one of the top. He's not the best linebacker on his own team. No, exactly. It's brutal. 
Uh, Musa, maybe you feel different. Do you think that the Bucks can maybe get something for Devin White if they tried? If they let's say that they haven't tried to actually trade him, maybe they've actually done that. Do you think they get anything for him? They're not going to get someone as good as him. I think that's why we're kind of just trying to see we can make something happen. Uh, it's more along the lines of uh, we value his experience, especially you know being part of the Buccaneers organization. I think that we don't just want to just toss him away if he's acting a little dramatic. I think we're trying to say, hey, listen, young man, you know, let's you know, let's do something, let's work something out. Um, I think he's been a little carried away, but Carter, worst comes to worst, if we have to, then we should, you know, get rid of him. We'll, we should just get a trade, you know. You right. make it sound like this guy is. You make you know like uh, I think we should all just or I mean you guys are already aware of it, but. We're not going to win or lose the Super Bowl because of his presence. Right. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. For sure. So for that reason, so for that reason, it's like, you know, listen, we're already we're already rebuilding. You know what I'm saying? We already got a bunch of bricks to use. And if we lose an established brick, <laughs> we'll just use another. We'll find another one to build the house. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So that's I all it is. That. I, was was say, I couldn't agree with that anymore perfectly. Yeah, that was beautiful, man. Wow. That was that was awesome. I, I don't think we're going to get a better clip than that for the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Um, no, but kind of, <laughs> kind of moving on from the Devin White fiasco, if you want to call it that. I feel like calling it a fiasco is really dramatic, too, because De like – like I said, Devin White's – like Mustafa just said, if Devin White plays or doesn't play, it's not going to affect whether or not they win the NFC South. You know, they'll, exactly. 100%. they'll lose it with or without them. So, anyways, we'll move on from that. Um, since OTAs have started, are there any storylines other than the QB battle? Because we've, we've kind of talked it to death and we'll continue to talk it to death. Um, are there any other positions that you look at and think, hmm, this could be kind of something interesting to watch in OTAs on, you know, training camps and all that stuff, preseason – um i'm i'm gonna answer first just just uh kind of send it bro um <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at the offensive line because um you know they spent the second round pick on cody mouch um they still have luke Gadecki. uh they signed a veteran they brought in some guys they brought back aaron steiny and nick leverett so there's just a lot of kind of things that are up in the air and i think since it was the worst group you know last year by far the position groups if you had to rank them on the bucks the offensive line would be at the bottom and uh, they were one of the worst groups in football in general. So, you know, they still got Robert Hainsey, too. It's just a lot of weird kind of question marks. So um, that's my pick for the most interesting position battle moving forward, especially with Werfs. Who knows where he's going to line up. There's Apparently it's done. It's set in stone. He's moving to left tackle, but we'll see. Um, Zach, how about you? What's your position to watch moving forward? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right on it. I think offensive line is the most interesting. From what I'm reading, they've all put on size uh, – Everyone is bigger than they were last season. The mock at uh, at right guard compared to Shaq, or yeah, Shaq Mason was our guard, right guard, right? Yeah. yeah. So compared to Shaq Mason, he's four inches taller and like twenty pounds heavier. So I, I think that it's we got much bigger, which I think is a good thing for Tampa. I think it's going to alleviate some of the pressures that happened last season. Um. Another interesting position, I guess, would be running back if I had to pick one. But, again, really we only have practicing right now. I think we have Rashad White, Keyshawn Vaughn, and Patrick Laird. Um, so I, I know everyone was kind of big on Sean Tucker. I didn't even know that dude had a, a heart condition, so he's not cleared to play. Oh, shit. Yeah, I had no idea. I was reading something on OTAs today, and it's like Sean Tucker and – Chase Edmonds aren't playing Edmonds due to injury and Chase uh, or no Chase Edmonds due to injury and Sean Tucker to a heart condition. I was like, well, that's that's, that's not good. good. Yeah. Goodness. Yeah. I'm going to see if while, while Musab's answering his, I'm going to see if I can find out more on that. Real yeah. Quick. I, hope, I hope he's OK. Just not even from a Jesus. That's yeah, exactly. That's not, that's not fun. Um, yeah. I hope he gets better. Uh, Musab, how about you? What's uh, what's your position to watch? Uh just kind of for OTAs and training camp in general. Yeah, you guys kind of beat me to it. Uh, yeah, with the O-line uh, situation, uh, I just have to say it's not settled just yet. Obviously, we kind of have uh, some firm ideas as to who stands where. But uh, 
I can see a couple of things being tried out. Um, but I will have to say one little kind of thing is at least with uh, with Luka Decky, you know, being a, a returner or like his second year, I think that we have finally put him in the, you know, we, we put him back in the right position just because I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, Luka Decky now, you know, like is a potential starter. Uh, we put him back in his original position, okay, all right, which was at right tackle. And I think that uh, he was looking fine when he was playing. So uh, I think we should run it back like that, but I'm open to it. But uh, other than that, though, I have to say uh, I just want to see how this JTS, Yaya Diaby kind of fight maybe might happen or battle. I don't want to say fight battle. Um it's hard to say this, but I mean, you know, perhaps we've already mentioned this before, Carter, but I am disappointed at the fact that we have someone like Logan Hall and Kalija Kansi battling it out for defensive end. Okay. You know, these are our recent draft picks, one from this guy, one one guy from this year, one guy from last year. Uh, but hey, may the best man win and wait, may we fix these things ASAP, but Minus the quarterback thing, I mean, wide receivers, I think we, <laughs> we're, we'll we be all right. We'll make something happen. But as Zach mentioned, it's really with the running back situation. Uh, but I'm thinking more about second string. Who is actually going to end up supporting Rashad White? Because he can't do it all. All right, no successful Super Bowl team just has one running back running the whole show. Sure. And maybe yeah, a little exactly. bit of sprinkle. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's it for me, you know. Um I, I don't have much to say about all these guys like Patrick Laird, Ronnie Brown, Sean Tucker. Uh, I'm also looking forward to seeing uh, what Zach says about Sean Tucker and his condition. I wish him all the best, but that's about it, though. Yeah, it's the big the big exclamation point minus the ones that y'all have already mentioned is who's who's going to back up Rashad White because all eyes are on him now as starter. For sure. Zach, hit us with the yeah, – I was going to say, so apparently – this was found out at the combine. Um, it says Sean Tucker was found to have an ongoing heart issue when he was evaluated in, Indi in Indianapolis ahead of the NFL combine in February. An anonymous executive said, this sounds like it's not going away. Essentially he could be done. Tucker didn't participate in any drills at the combine due to an undisclosed medical issue. So basically it says that he's like, there's not a name for what's wrong, but they just say that it's an ongoing heart condition and that there's apparently there's a chance that he could never play my goodness that's all that's, that's what caused him to slip that's what caused him to go undrafted right yeah i'd imagine a, a, a proclamation like that from a doctor will kill your draft stock right that's, that's really unfortunate because he seems i mean don't get me wrong he wasn't like a, a, a b john robinson type of guy but he seemed pretty talented and it was yeah. a bit curious the way he fell out of the draft and that's that's tough to see. Um, yeah, obviously, all all hopes to him that he gets better or that it, it doesn't Agreed. it doesn't remain an issue. Um, but yeah, honestly, just for his sake, I hope he doesn't. I know this is awful to say, but I hope he doesn't play football just because it sounds awful. That sounds serious. Um, yeah, like I hope he doesn't play just to like, right. just, bro. Dude. Money's not money's not worth your yeah. life like at yeah. all. Yeah. I, I know it's easy easier to say than to but anyways regardless um that's scary um i yeah hope he gets better hope it doesn't become doesn't remain an issue maybe he'll figure something out or maybe it'll get better um but yeah that's definitely because he's a obviously he's a football player he's a healthy dude he works out you know all this stuff so i mean if he's having that kind of issue then yeah that that's pretty serious um yeah so hopefully he gets better um, but speaking, just kind of to wrap up the episode uh, with something a little more fun. Um, are there any rookies that y'all are looking at uh, to maybe make a big impact from OTAs onward? Um, I'm thinking uh, my, my guy Trey Palmer out of Nebraska is a guy I'm looking at to kind of fill out that receiver depth. Um, I think he's definitely going to have to be someone that, you know, maybe becomes a returner or he'll have to fill in just because the injury history of Russell Gage and Chris Godwin, unfortunately, they both yeah. had – pretty severe injuries. So, you know, it's, it's kind of tough to depend on both of them to stay healthy. So Palmer could be inserted into a starting role at any point during the season. So I'm looking for him to make a big impact. Um, Musab, how about you? Who's your rookie to watch moving forward for the Bucks and OTAs and training camp? 
For me, rookie to watch uh, probably has to be Kalaja Kansi. Uh, I think there's been a lot of talk about him, a lot of hype. I think it's now time for him to ball out more than ever uh, to show us that, you know, he's worth the first round pick, especially looking at our team right now. It's one thing to be picked up by a team when Brady's playing and, uh, I mean, there is pressure, but you're also like, hey, like I'm on Brady's team and, you know, I'm just going to do what I have to do. But <sighs> the biggest thing that I'm looking for is someone like Elijah Kansi to really pick it up. You know what I'm saying? We've had a couple rookies in the past that just really balled out for us and we're like, wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm hoping he's one of them. But, Zach... Who are you looking at? Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like Kalijah Kansi was the, the obvious answer with comparisons to Aaron Donald. Like, I think he's someone to watch out for. But just to be different, I'm going to go with Servassier Dennis. I said his name wrong earlier. It was Dennis, not Davis. I was close. Uh, I think that he – the fact that we got him in the fifth round was nice. I think that he's going to be a surprise to, to on this team. And I think that he's going to – make it a bit easier for us to think that we could get by without Devin White in the future. For sure. Yeah. I think, um, can't see the obvious one. You know, you, you spend a first round pick on a guy, especially when you have as many holes as the bucks do and you get Aaron Donald comparisons, you're going to have the spotlight on you regardless. Exactly. And, it. and it's definitely important to note that, you know, this is not a team that's going to be reliant on the quarterback to, excuse me, kind of lead them anymore. You know, this is more of a football team than Tom Brady's team. This is the Tampa Bay Bucks. This is no longer the Brady team. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Canty, like you said, he's going to have to kind of step up. Um, hopefully one of them can kind of become a leader. That would be a great thing to see one of them step into a leadership role, maybe earn a captain uh, badge by the end of the next year, into next season. Um, so, yeah, Canty's definitely a big one to watch. Um, and, yeah, we'll just see, you know, see how OTAs and training camp prog progresses. Um, but – we can't end the episode without thanking our listeners. Um, we're kind of coming into the end here. Thank you all so much. We really appreciate y'all. Um, and if you liked what you heard, if you thought we were we were good looking up here on screen, you know, definitely hit the like and subscribe button. Um, you're tuning in from YouTube. Uh, you can see us more often. Um, so, or, you know, if you can check us out on social media, maybe you think we're all, you know, full of it and you want to let us know. Feel free to add us. Let us know. <laughs> Yeah, we love hey, we love all kinds of feedback. Right. Exactly. Positive and negative, definitely, for sure. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok now. So definitely check us out there at RBLR Sports. Uh, thank you again for listening. Uh, make sure to hit the like and subscribe if you liked it as well. I know I already said that, but you know, you never have enough reminders. Uh, but <laughs> as always, go Bucks. Go Bucks. Go Bucks. Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.